Hello, Jeff. Been a while. Blah, blah, blah. Title card. The past has seen the glory of the past and the future. This is one of the most famous and important covers in comic book history. Action Comics number one. The first appearance of Superman. The very first image that the world glimpses of the Man of Steel. But something that isn't often talked about. Do you know why Superman is smashing the absolute shit out of that car? Because that's something that does happen through the course of the story. Turns out it's because... Superman hates misogyny. Before his plot lines overflowed with hegemonic American values and sci-fi rigmarole, Superman was an indestructible social justice warrior fighting his never-ending battle for truth and justice. American Way didn't come along until like the 50s. I think it was like a, a Cold War thing. So check it. Clark Kent and Lois Lane are out dancing. And Lois isn't really into it because... You know what? I'm gonna save discussing the uncomfortable weirdness of the Clark slash Lois slash Superman dynamic because while it is important and really messed up, there are some other serious problems here that I want to get to more directly, and I'll talk about the other in a future video. So they're dancing, and this other guy, let's call him Butch Mason, decides that Lois should be dancing with him, and he tries to cut in, and Clark is all like, well, golly, maybe you should just dance with him, and then we can leave and not have any trouble. Because the original interpretation of Clark Kent was very much the, oh, golly, um, mm, mm, guy. While Lois, and this is what I absolutely love about Lois Lane, from issue freaking one, says, you can stay and dance with him if you wish, but I'm leaving now. And when the guy refuses to take no for an answer, she slaps the shit out of him. Which he, of course, responds to by shoving Clark Kent, because that's how you win over a woman, right? Defeating her current handler? And Lois bails on all of them and hops into a cab. Now, here's where things get dark. Butch declares that he won't be made a fool of, and he and his boys proceed to get in their car, run Lois's cab off the road, and kidnap her. This is obviously never explicitly stated in a comic from the 1930s, but there are only a couple of ways that a story like that would play out in the real world. Assault, sexual or otherwise, and or murder. In the fallout of the Isla Vista shooting and the subsequent rise of the hashtag yes all women, Deanna Zant, inspired by writer Kate Harding, created a Tumblr called When Women Refuse, linked below, which chronicles violence committed on women who refuse the sexual advances of others. These things happened then, and happened still. The first public image of Superman, and one of the stories that began his launch as a figure of worldwide pop culture mythology, is him directly fighting this kind of entitled misogyny and sexual violence. And, even though it's the first issue, that story still isn't the first instance of Superman doing that. Now, the actual first Superman story in Action Comics number one is an in medias res affair of him busting into the governor's mansion to get the governor to pardon an innocent woman who's about to be executed because Superman has apprehended the real killer. But the first villain that Superman actually fights in frame, or rather, one-sidedly ragdoll flings him around the frame because he's Superman, is a man who is beating his wife with a belt. Superman busts in, lifts the asshole up one-handed, and hurls him against the wall. The guy pulls a knife on Superman, which, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pause here to consider the implication of the wife beater readily having a knife on him already. Hmm. Anyway, the knife breaks on Superman's chest because Superman, and the wife beater straight up faints out of terror. So yeah. Superman hates misogyny. And also political corruption. The last story in Action Comics number one is Superman kidnapping and tormenting a warmongering Senate lobbyist. Oh, how I miss you, socialist Superman. Yes, I am aware that this is all anecdotal at best, and that Superman has been written in plenty of problematic ways in his 75 plus year history. But there's something to the fact that back in 1938, Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster created the ultimate indestructible hero only to set him loose on very real-world examples of violent misogyny. A lot of people make the argument that Superman is a boring character because he's too good or isn't believable or whatever. But I believe in Superman. And I believe that if we work at it, someday, humanity can be just as unbelievably super. See you in the future. the Man of Steel's greatest social justice hits, just type in Superman vs. the KKK into your favorite search engine, which, let's not kid ourselves, is probably Google. What are you gonna do, use Bing? <laughs> Superman hates him some racists, and Superman's early ass-kicking of the KKK is chronicled in various places, and 
with various degrees of accuracy, such as drunk history, mental floss, and a book called Superman vs. the Ku Klux Klan by Richard Bowers. That's all I got.